Hey everyone, welcome back to the Sonically Podcast, where music creators educate music creators. I'm Elmo, and we have a very exciting guest today on the podcast. This Houston-based creator is an incredible performer and producer whose ability to channel his creative energy to song has led to the smash hit, Shut Up, My Mom's Calling, which can be heard all over TikTok and has recently entered the Billboard Hot 100. He is currently working on a new album that will be released in the near future and has joined us today to talk about all things related to his life as a music creator. So without further ado, we welcome Hotel Ugly's Mike Fisella. Sir, how are you, man? What's up, man? How you doing? Thanks for having me, man. It's a pleasure. No doubt. Thank you for joining us. And um, I'm really... I've been um, excited about uh, talking to you ever since we had that email exchange because, first of all, I love I love the music. I love what you, what you're doing. Um, it's so soulful. It's so unique. It's so yeah. It's, it's just such an incredible sound sonically, and like I just felt that there's a lot of story behind your origins and kind of like how you got to this place where now you're kind of just on the on the cusp on the on the brink of of doing more amazing stuff so Mm -hmm. yeah super super cool yeah man yeah it's great to be here i'm excited (laughs) show um so yeah you know speaking of the origin story is like if we could just like rewind back to the beginning did you grow up with music in your life um yes and no um there was always a guitar laying around my house um my dad had had uh played a little bit and uh i would always you know just pick it up and mess around with it um you know kind of just teaching myself some chords some scales whatnot stuff like that um so i think it was because of that just having just having guitar sitting around just accessible to me you know really helped my I guess helped me train my ear as at a young age. Um, but, you know, yeah, I've always just loved doing it since I was young. I would just sit in my room and just hum things to myself and write words and write lyrics. And, you know, I just always had, I just always loved it. You know what I mean? Mm. So when you say like playing, like playing around with guitar, was it sort of just discovering chords on it? Or um, did you have any guidance with that? Or was it just kind of like, there's a guitar and I'm just going to put my fingers on it and just see what happens. Yeah, it was pretty much that. Um, I think I, I signed up for a guitar lesson one day and I, I think I went to one lesson and I hated it and I never went back. Um, <laughs> see, I, I, I wish now I would have gone to lessons, but uh, you know, um, yeah, I, I just kind of picked it up, messed around with it. You know, I, I, I grew up in, you know, the age of YouTube and whatnot. So you know, I would always look up, you know, how to play like this sweet child of mine slash guitar solo and, you know, just mess around with stuff until, you know, I just kind of sounded like I knew what I was doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's awesome. Was uh, you had you had mentioned like it was your dad's guitar. Was he encouraging to you like keep on doing that? That's awesome. Or was he more like, you know, I've come from an Asian family, so my parents are, were always just like, you know, go study, you know, do something else. Yeah, um, yeah. How, how's de- it for they, you? <laughs> yeah, they definitely wanted me to study a bit more than I probably was at the time. Um, but yeah, they were always pretty encouraging. Um, and I remember like one day I, with no proper training, I like came out of my room and played like a song for my like family. And they were like, where the heck? did you learn that i was like i don't know but yeah it was always um it was always encouragement um to just do things that you know i was good at you know what i mean Mm. awesome that's awesome yeah i did check out the uh the youtube channel there and you do have that video of uh uh of you playing the song for your dad and he was just kind of oh yeah that was pretty sick yeah that that was a good one (laughs) Um, so at what point after messing around with the guitar and everything, did you discover like actually making your own music, producing songwriting and that type of thing? I think 
there was a shift between when you know when I was coming up I was like really into you know like classic rock like my all-time one of my all-time favorite bands is like Guns N' Roses so I was always trying to like learn their stuff but I kind of grew to love rap music during that same time period nice. so I would be you know 13 14 years old sitting in my room with a notepad writing raps to like you know hip-hop beats and stuff and that kind of evolved into me getting my first like MIDI keyboard and I got like Ableton for the first time like years ago barely knew how to use it and that's where it formed into like oh I can like produce beats I know how to do this I can produce music that you know just things I like to hear you know what I mean so Mm -hmm. it went from me really loving rap to writing lyrics to producing beats you know what I mean that's like where I first discover like oh you can make your own music you know do you remember your first beat that you made crazy enough i do and it's probably on youtube somewhere i would have to like find it but oh my gosh i do remember it and it was so bad it was so horrible and just out of line but you know it got me here you know what i mean (laughs) so (laughs) um like who were who are the early influences like because usually when you make that first beat it's sort of like something you want to make that that uh track like the stuff that you're mm-hmm. listening to from you mm-hmm. is like kanye mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. what was yours uh, i would have to be um during that time period i was really jamming drake's take care album and meek mill i'm a boss you remember that song <laughs> I think so. I used to love those songs and I would try to make beats similar to like either one of those like styles, you know what I mean? Yeah. So those are really like my my musical awakenings, especially like Drake's like early albums. I know that sounds funny, but you know, it's it's so true. Like his songwriting and his cadences are just top tier, you know what I mean? So totally. You no, know, not to mention his beats and all his producers that he works with. So um yeah, that was a that was a heavy influence on my on my first you know, opening my eyes to to beat making, yeah. Right on. So from making Drake type beats to now, you got you have you guys have a crazy eclectic soulful sound. And how how did it evolve to that? Like from the 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 Drake beats to the current sound? Right, right. So I tried to take my musicianship like outside of the computer. You know what I mean? Um, So it went from, you know, like programming drums, you know, VSTs, plugins and stuff like that. And then I was like, well, shoot, like I saw artists like, you know, like Steve Lacey coming up, you know, coming up like back in, you know, like 2017 and people like Tor and Moi too, like these real like niche, you know, indie guys who are just like picking up a guitar, but you know, it's not like rock music. You know what I mean? So I was like, wow, I love that like vibe of like just being able to like play very chill, calm stuff, you know. And also with that being said, it's more me, you know what I mean? Um, Although I think I'm, you know, pretty decent at, you know, making like beats and, you know, producing like rap style stuff. um, That was always for another artist, you know what I mean? It was, I was always producing for someone else or engineering for someone else. But once I really got to step in my own, shoes as an artist um it kind of just naturally formed and you know it's just i don't really have to try to make hotel ugly sounding things that that's what just comes most natural you know what i mean like mm-hmm. when i strum a guitar play some keys on on the piano so. nice yeah yeah so little little, yeah. little evolution there <laughs> yeah i was really curious about that because like I just find the, the the choices that you make for the layers of your music are very intentional, and yeah, and like what really st- sticks out to me is 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 the chords that you choose. Like it's not they're very soulful, mm-hmm. and and I, I would say there's probably like a searching f- for that, like one hundred percent in your mind frame of like yeah, I just got to get this, I got to make it feel a certain way, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. I don't really like basic like major chords if that makes sense you know what i mean i really love like a nice like 
minor seven, minor nine, or like some like diminished, like weird sounding chords, or like hit a note that like almost is the wrong note for a second, and then come back and bring it in and, you know, resolve everything. And it's definitely something that um, I have to search. Like you said, I have to search for a couple minutes when I put my hands on a keyboard or a guitar and uh, find the find that vibe. You know what I mean? <clears throat> totally. Uh, yeah. So now, you know, as I mentioned before in the intro, you guys are doing like 17 million streams a month. You guys, you know, hit Billboard Hot 100, which mm-hmm. I don't know, man. Like that's that would be like what I would imagine it to feel like is like a dream come true. Uh, it must feel incredible. But um, what were some of the hardest moments in your journey to getting there? And uh, how did you overcome those hardships? Yeah, there was a lot of them, dude. Um, I guess the main thing was, besides like my close circle, people like don't believe that this is a real thing that you can do like as a job or like, you know, just in general. Um, So I think that was the hardest part is just like, trying to convince everybody like, no guys, I'm serious. Like, I think I can really do this. And, and it took everybody just brushing me off and, you know, it b- boiled my blood. And so I was like, you know what, screw all this. I'm going to put my own stuff out. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to pretty much break every rule, do everything unorthodox, you know? And um, yeah, I think that was the hardest thing is just, you can't really convince people about this kind of thing you just have to do it you know what i mean and then they'll see Mm -hmm. and then they'll come around you know what i mean so i think that's been the hardest part um is like finally when you get to this point you can it's like and i told you so moment um Mm -hmm. but in a good way you know what i mean yeah yeah who are your who are some of your biggest doubters hmm you know crazy enough it's like the people who you grew up with it's like the people who know you personally, you know, the people who I like went to high school with and stuff like that, who were like, you know, who I would see over the years and they'd be like, oh, what are you doing? Are you still rapping? And I'd be like, what? Like <laughs> That no? tone goes up, you're like, you still rapping, doing that? Yeah, exactly, rapping? exactly. Because, yeah. you know, people see you in a studio and they don't know what goes on there. You know what I mean? So, yeah, that's that's probably been the worst part. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. No, no, no hit on rapping it. I would have loved to become a rapper too, you know what I mean? But yeah, you know, I just wasn't. <laughs> For sure. Um, so, I mean, you mentioned some ru- some of these rules uh, that you broke. Like, I guess there's a conventional thought and a conventional path that people think that you, uh, as an artist, must follow. Uh, what were some of the rules that you you feel like like you broke in order to like kind of navigate this whole journey? I think it's like the whole collective like vibe of like what Hotel Ugly is. It's almost like, you know, it's hard to explain. It's more of like how we conduct ourselves. You know what I mean? So, you know, if we make, if we're posting on Instagram, we might post like a blurry picture of a sandwich being eaten, you know, in the middle of the street or something like nobody in their right mind is (laughs) like, you know, they, they, they'd rather take it to, you know, like a, you know, a a photo studio, get something nice and clean and really just proper and stuff like that. And granted we do do things like that when, when it calls for it, but um, you know, we like to call it just, we we like to keep it ugly. You know what I mean? (laughs) So whether it's, you know, posting something goofy, but tasteful, um, or something like uh, like our song names are is completely like unorthodox, and I really think that like draws people's attention. Um, and it's just like things like when you see Hotel Ugly, you're like, whether it's and something on the internet or you know an ad, whatever it might be. Every time you see it, you're like, what the heck am I looking at? What what the heck am I hearing right now? And uh, I think it all just you know meshes very well together. So that's awesome. I guess those would be a few few rule yeah. breaks weird things we do because i mean i i almost feel like that mindset has to be there in this day and age because you're really trying to cut through all of the um the access that everybody has right. now like in terms of distribution and it's it's almost as if like if you're yep. not you know if you don't have those like huge major label budgets 
um it's sort of like it's all on right. the approach of being creative and kind of like getting your stuff seen but yeah like to to speak on that a little bit further like there's independent artists like uh russ that heavily evangelized the independent grime to grind to the music game and it like it seems like you know you guys have played that game pl like played those rules to to a t and it's it's been working out really awesome for you guys but like were you guys always on that tip that might that independent hustle tip mindset uh or did you guys have a, a a point where you're like man we gotta hit up the labels first and get a big deal um and mm -hmm. then and then do our thing like more of like a top-down approach so at first it kind of happened very quickly for us um you know it took me years to find my sound i finally found the sound and then i put out the music and i didn't really know what i wanted from i just wanted to put out music and i wanted people to know my music and listen to me and jam me in the middle of you know, nowhere on the other side of the world. That was my main goal. Once we put out the music, it just formed a life of its own. And from there, <clears throat> we just started to gain all these streams and all these fans. And, and once we realized, oh, wow, like we're doing, we accidentally, and this sounds like spoiled, but this is really how it went. We accidentally did what like a major artist is doing on a label. Um, it got to the point where when labels were reaching out to us and things like that, it just didn't make sense for us to accept any of those offers because we were already, you know, we were already basically doing that on our own. Mm -hmm. So they were saying, hey, let's give you this, this, and this, but we want all your, you know, all your masters. We want your tour money, your merch, your everything. They wanted completely everything. And it's like, well, we could just do this by ourselves, and like we don't understand what we're like using you for mm. you know uh, especially at that stage as like a, a young new artist like they're just looking to you know grab you up before you know you you pop off so you know i guess once the labels started reaching out and we started to see how the game goes we were like oh yeah let's definitely stay independent um for you know as long as we can within reason um yeah it's, it, it was kind of tough like turning down like big crazy deals of like you know numbers we've never seen before but mm -hmm. you know we did it and uh and you know it, i think it just like built the hype and it made hotel be more like exclusive as like a you know as a brand and yeah. um yeah i mean we, we've always we've always been on the independent grind if, if something nice comes along and it's it's respectful and reasonable and then we'll humor it but mm. as of right now the independent grind is definitely um definitely the way to go if you have the means for it you know what i mean for sure yeah yeah and and i guess like it really helps that like everything for you guys happened so serendipitously where you're just like your intention was was very simple like i'm gonna make music that i want to make I'm going to, I'm going to put it out mm -hmm. there and see what the, the universe does with it, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, cause there's a lot of guys mm -hmm. that grind for years and years don't receive that and then always feel that like, oh, things would be better if I could just get that deal or whatever. And things yeah, would be yeah. so much easier or whatever, but mm -hmm. it, it's really, um, it's really like not the case. I get I, yes like, yes yeah, sometimes it's really not like because a lot of times like these young artists you know with a good song uh you know they'll sign to a, a label for a bunch of money and think it's great but you know at the end of the day i'm sure you know it's just it's just a big loan at the end of the day so a lot mm -hmm. of these kids aren't able to like pay back these advances and you know they end up in the long run getting really just screwed over and it can be dangerous so yeah you know it really depends it really depends but you know i think the best thing is just to like connect with people like and like build like a brand along with the music you know what i mean like something from for them to get behind something for them to like wear on a t-shirt and like be like you know pe someone can look at them and be like whoa who is that you know what i mean mm. really like get behind something for sure 
Yeah, speaking of which, um, you've been known to also advocate for mental health awareness. Um, like, that is something that Hotel Ugly stands for and mm -hmm. really gets behind. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like you want uh, that to be attached to your brand. Um, mm -hmm. Why is that impor important to you? Yeah, so uh, that's something me and my my brother uh, had an idea to do. Uh, it's just really, we, we were like donating to a couple, you know, mental health facilities and organizations and stuff like that. Um, and, you know, we struggle with that ourselves, like very much so. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't even begin to, to start. And uh, also, you know, on our, on our like social media, on our, on our Instagram, there's there's kids and you know fans every day who, you know, message us saying like you guys helped us get through this this and the third thing and it's just long story short, it means like so much to me to be able to be in my position and be able to, you know, reply to these people and and really be like hey like I'm just like you you know I'm just, you know I'm here you're here we're both DMing each other right now we're real people um, mm. so, you know with that being said. Um, mental health is just super important because, you know, it can completely change your life if you can just have, you know, a little bit of like that strength to, you know, get up on your feet and, and really go out, go out and make something happen for yourself. You know what I mean? So for me, if I can help others do that, uh, along with myself, you know, that's, that means the world to me. And, and, you know, I love when people reach out to me and they're like, you saved my life. You helped me. You know, I just, I feel like that's my, my musical duty is to, you know, mm -hmm. give these people what they need to, to really feel peace. And, you know, they can sit in their car and cry if they have to. And, you know, I, I don't know. It's just, I could go on for days with it's this a beautiful stuff. thing. I mean, man. It's, just, it's just super important. Just, yeah. I mean, um, as a music creator, I wonder the ability to take your thoughts your emotion emotions uh like whatever you're going through on this on, on the on the mental health journey like the ability to channel all of that into music has that played a significant role in like your your ability to get through certain things yeah 100 percent. if i'm you know strangely enough sometimes i make the best music when i'm feeling like my most like emotionally like like my most sad you know what i mean um which kind of sucks sometimes but uh you know it 100 percent helps me connect to to the music and it makes it feel very real and people i think can can recognize that and i think that's what connects us um yeah i think it's just very very just authentic yeah <clears throat> yeah i think there's a a richness to the sound that definitely comes from a a core and uh can definitely feel that for sure so i guess like moving moving on to a, a few i guess technical questions what does a typical day making music look like for you what what is your like what is your process for for putting your music together yeah, so uh, I have a couple weird different ways. Um, sometimes uh, I like to sit at my desk at home, like by myself with headphones on and my phone in my hand and just, you know, write lyrics to, you know, some music that I've already put together. You know what I mean? Um, that's always just a simple way to do it that I find myself, you know, creating. But a lot of the times I'll come to the studio like where i'm at now and uh you know i'll tell all like my producer friends hey everybody like on this day like we're working on this song from the album like everybody who wants to help me out like come on let's let's do it so you know i'll get in the room with it you know four or five different people who you know i've worked closely with and uh you know, we have a synth set up in the corner. We have another synth in the other corner. We have a guitar over here, a bass over here. We just have instruments sitting everywhere. And we kind of all just pick something up and we just, uh, you know, play around and come up with ideas. And then, um, and then, you know, I'll take it home and just like polish it up. You know what I mean? Hmm. Um, there's other times where, 
you know, I'm sitting completely by myself and, you know, just at a keyboard, just sad and just playing some keys and humming lyrics into, you know, my microphone and just seeing what happens. You know what I mean? So it's like, it's very sporadic for me. Um, I also like love writing music, like while sitting in the car, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's like, so it really depends. Sometimes when one thing isn't working, I'll go try another thing. Um, and if that's not working, I go back to the first thing. So, you know, it gets, it gets kind of like random and sporadic for me, but, um, uh, but yeah, I like to swap between like being completely alone, making music, I'll get burnt out and then I'll work with people and I'll get burnt out from that and go back to being alone. So I don't know, it's mm -hmm. weird. I'm a weird person when it comes to that stuff. So. <laughs> Man, what, whatever works, like, I think yeah, you're right? doing a bunch of things, right? <laughs> like all the stuff you're doing is there, like, there's no, I don't really feel like there's a wrong way. I right, think it's just right. what, whatever works for you. Um, yeah. I, I'm wondering, like, because now that there's some, um, some, I guess, pressure to get the album done, I guess like a danger of the pressure is to like, mm -hmm. to not bring in sort of like this, like this feeling of being forced to do something where, where the, the authentic right. nature of the process kind of like is drowned out. How do you kind of like combat that? Yeah, that's very aggravating and difficult when that happens. Um, I've been dealing with it this whole, you know, past month, you know, more or less. Um, but, you know, for instance, if I get to a point where I feel like I'm forcing music, um, I'll literally just stop everything in its tracks. I'll be like, look, everybody, we're taking a break. You guys can go home. I'm completely burnt out for today. Like I'm forcing everything. Nothing natural is coming out. Um, and yeah, it is very, very uh, aggravating. So I guess the way I combat it is just by in that moment, I'll do something that completely takes my mind off it. So if I need to take a break, I'll go play some GTA for for an hour and have some kids talk shit to me, like yell at me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, it builds character, you know, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? So, totally. And I can come back, you know, and, uh, you know, with, with like a fresh, with like a fresh head or, you know, something more productive like if i go go to the gym come back later on that evening you know just get something get my blood flowing get some different creative juices going and and uh yeah i guess that i guess that's how i do it but uh i i don't know that is such an aggravating thing i'm thinking about it now about how aggravating that gets and it's just oh my gosh <laughs> yeah i know i know i know how that feels so yeah man. uh you're not alone yeah man so what can we expect from this album? Like, is it uh, very much in line with the singles or is it, uh, are there any like surprising things that people can expect from it? So I definitely tried to push the envelope a little bit. I definitely tried to create a little more flamboyant, almost extra sound in this, with this, uh, with this album um i have a lot of um mixtures of like synth like synth wave vibes but also dry like acoustic vibes um so i would say it is in line with like the hotel ugly vibe um but it's definitely some new stuff that i think people haven't heard before and just weird sounds that and, and weird like mashups and combos of like genres and instruments that aren't really being heard right now. So mm. I think I got some, some cool things up my sleeve. I think people are really going to like it. Right on. So, yeah. um, yeah, like when you are exploring the soundscapes for the, the work on this album, are you, um, taking part in a lot of like sound design? Like, are you going out there to like capture sonic environments or are you, um, getting a lot of the sources, from like plugins and, and that type of thing. So I will, re I will use some plugins every once in a while. I love like, um, you know, I love using like Juno 106 plugins. They're like freaking so great. But uh, I, uh, I'm a big like synth fan. I'm a big like analog guy. So like, you know, I have a, I have a Moog grandmother sitting in the corner. I have like a poly D synth. Um, I have my, my Jupiter X sitting right in front of me. And that's really where I get like all of my like sounds from like my favorite synth right now is the, is the Jupiter X. And there's like a specific sound, a specific patch that I go to every time. Um, 
And whether, you know, sometimes I tweak it, sometimes I raise the attack up a little bit, raise the, you know, release up a little, bit. little tweaks like that, but it's always like the same general, you know, sounds being put together. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't do too much stuff like out in the field. Like I won't like go out and like really capture soundscapes. I haven't really, um, you know, gone too deep into that. But as far as just like sound selection and you know, stuff like that, basically, I'm searching through these, uh, you know, synth patches and trying to patch different sounds and stuff like that, you know, all day long. Um, one of my favorite like patches that I've ever done is the uh, is the uh, the synth lead in uh, the song Grandmother. Mm. And um, that song is called Grandmother because I used the mode Grandmother and I patched like this crazy like weird detuned like mellotron flute almost Whoa. in that song and yeah. i probably couldn't patch it again if i tried it was just a random like you know freestyle patch and uh they call you know, that ghost within the wires yeah exactly exactly <laughs> exactly so you know i love doing that stuff and uh, especially me and like my but my producer buddies like we, we're just like super like sound nerds we love just like listen to a nice fat like sine wave and just cranking it onto Messing some it. yeah exactly so you know yeah like on shut up my mom's calling too like i was wondering on the there's a chorus drop a synth chorus drop that was very reminiscent to just this like old school r&b artist that i listened to back in the day his name was remy shand he was like he's this canadian canadian dude and it, that wherever you got that source from i was like yeah that sounds like that song very um, interesting yeah where yeah. What was that drop from? Like, like, are, are you speaking about like the sound specifically or? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, are you talking about like, it's like the lead, like the, the, like wonky lead dun, sound? Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Um, that one. So that was like early, 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 early hotel. That was like one of our first ever songs. Right. So in that era, I don't even think I had a piece of analog equipment that was I want to say that was a, a sound from Massive, the Massive mm. plugin. Gotcha. Um, which, funny enough, like that sound became like my favorite style of sound. And from there, I I was like searching for those like wonky like little synth vibes. And uh, come to find out, it's basically they're basically just emulating what a Juno or like you know any like classic Roland synth you know sounds like. So come to find out. You know the the sounds i was looking for were those rolling like the juno 106 you know classic synth sounds so yeah, yeah that's what yeah. that was it's like a massive massive emulator <laughs> that's so dope um yeah all right we have two uh final questions in the main uh question area cool and then um if you're cool with it we can move on to the rapid fire round let's do it okay so uh the second and last question is what is a technical tip you can pass on to other music creators to help make their sound, uh, their music sound better? Technical tip for other creators to make their music sound better. Hmm. I've, I'm thinking of like a hundred off top. I, I'm, I want a good one. Um, I guess, I don't know how technical this is, but doing too much or adding too much can you know really tank you you know what i mean you have to know when to call it when to draw that line of like oh should i add another you know a third synth lead or you know should i keep this one should i take this one out put a new one in um so i think first off simplicity tastefully is like your best friend um if we want to get i want to be like a little more technical i guess like with me i do a lot of like layering and stacking and harmonizing and stuff like that and i think if people tried to incorporate background vocals like how they used to do like you know if you go listen to like bob marley right now most of what you're hearing is like the whalers in the background humming and you know singing harmonies and stacks and stuff like that and people don't really realize that you can really incorporate that into anything, whether it's like R and B, like auto tune rap style of music, whether it's indie, whether it's hotel music, you know what I mean? Like, and a lot of these bigger guys, especially in this type of genre, are using uh, 
like background vocals and hums and oohs and ahs and stuff like that. So I think that's a little a little sauce for <laughs> for, for people right there. That's gonna go a long way. That uh, the next question is is somewhat related, but it's it's a it's not a technical question. Um, okay. Is there any life advice you could give to upcoming <clears throat> music creators um, who are aspiring to get to where you're at today? Um, what are some possible gems you might be able to pass on? I guess I would say don't lose that don't lose the vision of the end goal you know what i mean um because <clears throat> it, it's going to be very discouraging uh, at times um whether it's your own thoughts discouraging you or other people um and with that being said just don't stop making music just make as much music as you can um even you know even on days where you think you're making just horrible music put something together it doesn't have to go on your next album just always keep your you know your brain fresh and and your pen you know sharp you know what i mean so i think those are some sure. some good pieces of advice pieces no of advice that i try to i try to live by still but absolutely yeah. I, th I think those are as much as a lot of people might know subconsciously like that's what they need sometimes it mm -hmm. takes hearing it from somebody to 100%. really get it like to register right right um, so yeah thank you so much for that man yeah of course man um okay so let's move on to the rapid fire round um so basically yeah these questions are you know less in depth um and we ask the same questions pretty much to every guest that we have on the show just to really let everybody to get to know uh, the music creator side of you a little bit better. Cool. Um, question number one, what DAW do you use and why? Uh, okay. So <clears throat> I started off on Pro Tools for recording. I used to, I used to attempt to produce in Pro Tools, which I know a lot of people who do still. Um, but uh, after a while, I, I then got FL Studio and I started producing everything in FL still to this day i produce everything wow. in fl and then i take it over to pro tools for the recording so it's a little mixture between fl studio and 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 pro tools what is it about fl that um attracted you to it <clears throat> is it like uh the sound of the bounce coming out of it mm, honestly when i first started using it, i was like heavily into you know producing still and uh and i guess just the interface just was simple at the time and i just used it so much that i just you know i became very good at using fl and um i don't really notice any like differences i, I know people might come at me for this but i don't know any differences like on the actual like if i bounce something out from like fl rather than you know ableton or pro tools you know um but i will say i don't like recording in fl studio the uh when you record and then you bounce it out the recording part sounds strange to me mm -hmm. so that's why i like to take it over to pro tools plus it's it's pro tools is designed for recording anyway so it's just much simpler to use to me and and uh yeah it makes life easier so fo and pro tools little, little half and half <laughs> gotcha favorite plugins Ooh, favorite plugins i love using the Valhalla Reverb, the Valhalla Vintage Reverb, one of my favorite reverbs. All, all of their reverbs are, are amazing. Um, I love Valhalla. I love RC20. I love putting uh, l the little vintage like wobbles and, you know, static on, on my instruments and stuff. Um, I love like the Fab Filter EQs and, and compressors. And funny enough, I love using the stock Pro Tools plugins. Mm, the basic interesting. stock FL compressor. It's just overly compressed and sounds like crap, but I love it. I love it, especially if you know how to use it. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Dope. <laughs> what is a sound that always brings you joy? Ooh, sound that always brings me joy. That's a good one. I love the sound of a harp mm. or like someone playing a harp. That's like the most beautiful, like, 
I think I found someone like playing a harp on like a TikTok live stream once. Mm -hmm. And I sat, I just, I just sat there and played and listened to this like girl on, on a stream playing harp. And I was just, I think I like took a nap. I just was, <laughs> it was just so beautiful. It's like one of my favorite sounds like I've ever heard. I love a harp. <laughs> it's heavenly. It's very it heavenly. Is, exactly, think about exactly. clouds probably, and angels yeah, exactly. and stuff. <laughs> um, how would you rank your music creator skill sets out of 10 for the following. Oh, okay. Let's see. First, beat making. Beat making. Ooh. A solid, a solid eight. A solid eight. I'll take that. <laughs> okay. Sound design. Sound design. I'm going to go, I'm going to go six. I could be better. Mixing. Mixing. I think I'm a solid, solid nine with the mix. Wow. I'll take the nine on the mix. I'll, I'll put my mixes up against uh, up against people. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Top lining. Ooh, solid, solid eight, I guess. Yeah, I'll take the eight. <laughs> wow. Music theory. Two, <laughs> I, I I hardly know. I, I need to pick up music theory. Like my my bandmates help me with the music theory because those guys are are extraordinary with the with music theory. And funny enough, I know so little of music theory. I know the 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 basics. So a solid two. <laughs> right on. Yeah, man. Cool. Yeah, man. I I love it. I I think uh, there's uh, just a good combination of humility and championing yourself, which is yeah, right. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. I, tr I try to, I try to keep it that way. You know what I mean? So for sure. <laughs> what is your reaction, your facial expression when you know you made some heat? Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. So it's something like a, you know, classic, classic stink face. You know what I mean? You, you hear something yep. crazy. It's just like, <laughs> oh yeah like gross that's disgusting you know what i mean so yeah i'm like this i'm like something like this <laughs> <laughs> that's that stank yeah, face <laughs> everyone just gets mad for a second you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> mad with joy exactly exactly <laughs> um what is the secret to staying relevant hmm i think a big thing for staying relevant is uh, definitely getting in the mix on social media. Um, so when people are, if you're blessed enough to have, you know, people flooding your comments and replying to your DMs and showing you all this love and support, I think just as like an artist, if you're reaching back out to these people, thanking them, be like, hey, you know, if I get a DM that's saying, hey, it's my girlfriend's birthday tomorrow, can you send me a greeting? Like. You know, there's people who like charge you for that stuff or like there's people who never in a million years would reply to your DM and like actually do that. And I think that's something that I love to do. And I know, you know, our ugly fans like love it too. Um, you know, I'll just hop in the DMs, hop in the comments and just be a human being with other people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And just like mess around, say dumb, dumb things, troll people, um, you know, just stuff like that. And people, you know, see that, you know what I mean? And they recognize that and they're like, oh, this guy you know yeah let's go he's listen good. to his stuff he's he's fun dude you know what i mean so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. i just try to you know keep it like keep the vibe very light very happy very chill and uh i like to get in the mix and and talk to the people who are putting me in this position you know what i mean which are mm -hmm. the the people so i think that's a big thing people might think you know the tiktok videos and the instagram videos keep you relevant but you know that can also make you or break you and mm -hmm. it does help. It definitely does help. It helped us to an extent. And, uh, but you can't really like just rely on that. You know what I mean? You really have to, I guess, be a human being with the rest of the people. Don't try to be some enigma, you know, fantasy character that nobody ever sees. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. That's real. That's yeah, real. Yeah, so. What do you think will be the next technology that will impact the future of music creators? Oof, that's a good one. 
you know? I couldn't even begin to fathom what they might come out with. I think I I just recently saw uh, like this teenage engineering video and they have these like chorus, like little singing doll things I've never seen before. Just some crazy like technology. I don't even know what scientists put that stuff together. So <laughs> I don't know. I couldn't even think of like, I have no idea. It's probably going to be some sort of, it's probably going to be something that has to do with like distribution, like pushing like more independent ways to get on the level of these major guys. It's already mm. kind of there, like to a, to an extent, but I think the technology might, it might be less of like instruments and it might be more of like technical, like behind the scenes, like like apps or, you know, something like that or some sort of like software, you know what I mean? Yeah. No time. Well, what, no what do you think about this? Like Google, like uh, just this is news from a couple of days ago, but Google created an AI where you can type in text and then whatever you type in, it, it translates into some some piece of music. And like, I think I've seen something along those lines, not that you mention it. Like, what do you think about that? Like, do you think it will, you know, like your, our jobs are in jeopardy, like in the next five, 10 years? That is funny. You know what? They might be, dude. They might be. <laughs> um, the AIs are taking over. No, nah, um, yeah. but no, for real. I think I did see that. I think I saw someone make like, they're like, made a Drake song and it was like Drake's voice or something like with yeah. AI. I was like, yo, that is crazy. Um, and who knows, people might start listening to, you know, AI music. There's no telling. There's no telling. Mm. I know like, you know, a couple of years ago, they were doing like the, the hologram performances and stuff like that with fake artists, you know what I mean? So there's no telling it, it might be, yeah. if that does happen, I'll do a, I'll do a whole show with a holographic fake artist, man. I'll, I'll open up for them. So let's, yeah. let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, man. Whatever, whatever, whatever is good in five, 10 it, years. Right. Yeah, it is. It is. No, but in all seriousness, it, it, it is a little scary and a little weird. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you just don't know what's going to happen yeah. next, man. For sure. What's <laughs> next for hotel ugly? Anything you want to promote? Yeah, yeah. So um, on the second, what is that? Tomorrow? Yeah, so tomorrow I have a song coming out. It's called Action Figures Fighting. It's going to be the... It's going to be a single off of the album. So it's a little taste of what the album has in store. Um, I'm putting out, I think, one more song after this. Um... I think I'm going to follow through with that. I want to put out one more song, so I'm going to do my best to do that. And then uh and then I'm dropping the album in uh in a few months. So um yeah, that's really what's next. I'm planning planning a few um a few pretty cool events and shows around uh the states right now. Um yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Just just new music on the way and I'm trying to get out and come party with all the fans and mm. do some shows and have a good time so any plans to come to vancouver for a tour dude i would love 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 to i don't know if we're, we'll make it on the first leg but mm. we're definitely gonna come out there and we're definitely gonna have some fun over in vancouver right man 100%. yeah if you do holler man i would love of course, to check man, it out. of course of course i'll i'll make sure they get you in sounds awesome um okay so we're at our final question in the rapid fire round um yeah man um just thank you so much for taking the time out to, to talk to us today um of course, man. the final the final question is what does the word sonically mean to you hmm i guess it's just <sighs> everything that is sound and music you know, if, you know, when somebody shows me a mix or shows me anything, really, a, a song, a beat, you know, lyrics or anything like that, um, there's always, there's always a factor of how it sonically sounds, you know, it, it could be, you know, completely not creative, com or the opposite, it could be the most creative thing you've ever heard. Um, but if sonically, the, the, the sonic sounds are not pleasing your ears and you know just it doesn't sound right i think i think that's what it means to me it's just everything cohesively meshing together sonically you know what mm. i mean 
couldn't hey, have man. put it better myself. Hey, that's like butter, man. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> butter. Um, yeah, Mike, this has been an honor and a, and a pleasure to Likewise. have you have you on the show. Um, man, like I, I can just see, I can kind of foresee the future for you guys in, in terms of like just the next couple of years, like, um, you know, to the moon, man. Hey, so man, I'm, I'm hoping so, man. I appreciate that. No doubt. And, um, yeah, like you just want to thank you again for, um, being so generous with your insights. You know, a lot of, a lot of people out there need music, need to make music to get to that next phase in their lives and just to continue on it in their journey. And, uh, I think uh, you you are a, a wonderful example for for everybody trying to navigate the game, and um, I just wish you many blessings and uh, success in your the future of your journey. And um, thank yeah, you, thank thank you again. Thank you, man. Of course, likewise, man. I'm, I'm, I love what you're doing, man. Super awesome. It was it was great doing this. I had a blast. So me too. Me too. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. Thanks for having All right, me, man.